So if you're like me and you're still shut in at home due to the virus that's going around and you find yourself all of a sudden an instant homeschooling educator, let me give you some tips and tricks of how you can use your scuba diving techniques and your education as a scuba diver to help your children learn as well. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina and if you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Make sure you click this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, I'm going to try to get my best to help you out if you find yourself in a situation where you're an instant homeschool educator. That's where I find myself today because we are still in a state lockdown that simply means we can't leave our area or our house unless it's for emergency reasons. Now if you're a scuba diver and you're an instant homeschool educator, then teaching your children is going to be super simple. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that I use as an instructor, and I'm going to teach you three different methodologies to teaching and show you things that you can do with your children to help them learn their schoolwork by simply applying it to real world scenarios. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is really understand the methodology behind teaching. And there's three methodologies that us as scuba instructors that we follow. The first is old school lecture based teaching. And basically that's where we stand behind a podium, kind of similar to what I do here on our YouTube channel, is I stand in front of you guys and I give you a lecture based course. And it doesn't really matter the topic, but even though this is a tried and true method, a lot of people can't really learn this way. They've got to have hands on or maybe they're smart enough that they can learn on their own. They can study at home, which leads into the second way of learning, which is prescriptive learning. Now, prescriptive learning or prescriptive teaching is where we allow the students to actually read their manuals or do their online training. They come into us, and then, of course, they're going to take a test, and then all we actually teach them as instructors is what they don't know. And the way that we do that is we evaluate through their test. If they take a test and maybe they miss 10 out of 100 questions, then we're only going to train them on the 10 questions that they actually miss. Now, the last method and what we're going to focus on in this video is called active learning. Now the way active learning works, it's very similar to a lecture base and prescriptive teaching put together. Basically, you're going to let the group of students, or in this case, your child, learn on his own, but you're going to make things real world for them. So if you're doing fractions, you're going to take them out and show them how fractions work in the real world. If you're talking about history, you're going to take that student out and show them historical sites and let them learn in an active base environment. Now here at Lake Hickory Scuba, we actually teach using all three methods. Depending on how large our classes are, we may do the lecture-based course because we teach at a lot of colleges. We also may do prescriptive learning. That's going to be for the students who are on a limited time frame and they need to get things done quickly because maybe they got a trip coming up. But we really like the active learning, which is what we typically do. Instead of having somebody just sit in a classroom all day, we get them up. We do field trips. We take them into the showroom. We take them out on the boat and we show them things that they wouldn't typically see, say, in a video or a classroom setting or even just a book setting as well. So with that being said, let's get into some active learning sessions and I'll show you how you can train your students when you find or your children if you will when you find yourself as an instant homeschool educator. So one of the things that I really like about active learning is, is it takes things off of paper and it puts them into their hand, if you will, or into the student's hand. And it really allows them to visualize what they're actually learning. Sometimes you may hear this as practical learning. That means I'm going to tell you something, but then we're actually going to do it. We're going to put an object in our hand and learn based off what we read on or what we saw a video on or based off what the instructor gave us during the lecture base. So I actually did that with my daughter. You know, she's in third grade right now and she's learning fractions and she's learning how to utilize fractions in everyday life. Well, what I did is I just took what I teach in scuba through the rule of thirds, and if you're a diver, you'll understand what that means, and I took it out into a real-world scenario. I took her out on the boat, and while we're out in the water, I tried to explain gas mileage to her and how gas consumption works, which is another thing as a scuba diver we should really understand, and she really broke it down to the rule of thirds. Basically, we said, hey, if you've got a full tank of gas, how far can you drive before you need to start coming back? Well, she understands that if you drive more than halfway or you use more than half of your gas up, you may not actually have enough to get back. And that's where the rule of thirds apply. The same thing would apply to a scuba diver who's underwater breathing up his air supply. If he dives till he's halfway out of his tank, 
he or halfway out of his air supply, he may not have enough air to get back. So watch this quick little clip and you'll see just how quickly she picked up on fractions and how the rule of thirds actually apply to real world scenarios. All right, Tessa, what are we learning about today in math? Fractions and thirds. Fractions and thirds, okay. So what, what are we working with today as far as fractions go? Um, the fuel. The gas gauge, right? The fuel. So we got empty, we got a quarter, a half, three quarters, and full. So let me ask you a question. If we're going somewhere here on the boat and we drive until we have half a tank, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we turn around, is a half a tank gonna be enough to come back home? Yes. Yes. But what if we had an emergency or something happened and we had to use more fuel? Would a half a tank be enough to get back home? No. No. So what would be a better way of doing it instead of using up a half a we tank? We would use one, we use thirds. So the rule of thirds, and that tells us what? That you use a third to go to your destination for yeah. emergency and to go back. So you got a third to get to your destination, a third to get back home, and then you got a third for an emergencies, right? Okay, what else could we apply that to instead of just driving Scuba a boat? diving and pressure gauge. All right, so you got you got a pressure gauge to tell you how much air you got, One right? One third to go forward, back, and emergency. So you got a third to get to wherever you want to dive to mm -hmm. and see what you want to see. Mm -hmm. You got a third to get back on, and, and then emergency. a third for an emergency, right? Very good. Awesome. You ready to go? Yeah. All right, sit down, Tabby. A little scared. All right, sit down. All right, you ready? Just ease it forward. There you go. So another great example of active learning is taking what a student or your child reads in a book and trying to find it in the real world. One of my daughter's reading comprehensive stories today was on koala bears and how they're actually being affected because of their local habitat being burned by wildfires. And of course this is happening over in Australia and I couldn't really find no koala bears here in North Carolina, but what I could find is local ecology here that has been affected by humans and even by pollution itself. So while we were out on the lake, I had her pick out certain types of wildlife that she thought would be affected by a human. Well, one of the things that she found, of course, was a striped head turtle, which is very common here in our local lake. And she was also finding different types of pollution that actually affects that turtle itself. And so this was a great active learning session for her. And all I did was took what we teach through our ecology courses, whether it's shark ecology, whale ecology, turtle ecology, coral ecology, or just marine ecology. And now we've even got the manta ray ecology. And I took what I taught in those courses and I brought it into an active learning session for my daughter and applied it to what she was actually learning through her school lessons. And it, it made it easier for her to actually visualize what she was reading and it made it easier for her to understand her actual lesson. Do you know what kind of turtles they are? Yeah, that's a blue heron. Do you know what kind of turtles they are? Those are, no, those are striped heads. The wind's gonna blow us right to them probably. Well, let's not scare them off, let them sunbathe. That's what they're doing, they're trying to get warm. You know what turtles are? They're cold blooded. We're warm blooded, turtles are cold blooded. baby girl there's just some people in this world that just doesn't care well they need the blue ocean course <laughs> that is right the ssi blue ocean course look at all the trash over there if they throw the trash it can hurt the turtles because the turtles will suffocate from plastic that's right Okay, get the boat hook. Okay, got it. Tabby, sit still. Let Sissy get it. Hook it? Yeah. Let me just get it. Push it down through the middle of it.
Bring it up. All right, bring it over to Edge. Watch out for Sissy. There you go. Good job. The can, what does that say? The can jam. I think that's a game. Good job, Tessa. So guys, that's just a couple examples of some things that you can do if you find yourself in a situation where you're an instant homeschool educator. I know it can be difficult, but all you've got to do is take whatever your profession or whatever your trade is and find a way to relate the information that your child or your student is learning and relate it to real world scenarios. And there's nothing better than whatever your trade is. You are going to be a master of whatever it is that you do. There's no one better to teach that craft or to relate information they're trying to learn simply relate it to your craft and you too can be an instant homeschool educator. Guys, if you got any questions about any of the ecology courses we talked about, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer those questions the best I can. I also want to talk real quick about some free online webinars that Lake Hickory Scuba has coming up. Since we're all in this lockdown mode together, we still believe that you should never stop learning and so we want to offer you guys some free online webinars. Now these are free, they don't cost a dime, but if you want them to apply towards a special certification, then yes, you're going to have to purchase the digital kit from it and purchase the certification cost as well. To do that, all you've got to do is simply give us a call or send us an email and we can help get you registered as well. Yes, these certifications do apply towards your SSI Advanced Certification and towards your SSI Master Scuba Diver Certification as well. But guys, if you want a total list of what webinars we have coming up, check out the description below. I'll have them listed out and what they consist of as well. But guys, once again, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button for for me definitely share it as well as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always guys we appreciate your business